بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Hello In last lecture we studied about Alfred Adler's theory of individual psychology uh, we learned how our inferiority complex drives us towards superiority and uh, we also discussed uh, how compensation and overcompensation may affect our mental health and we also studied about the motivations to achieve superiority today we will learn something about uh, Carl Jung, Karen Horney and Eric Erikson. First of all, we will talk about Carl Jung, uh, but we will begin highlighting the differences between Jung and uh, uh, Sigmund Freud. As you know, Freud was interested in con unconsciousness and uh, according to him, unconscious is a place of an individual's unacceptable repressed desires. However, Jung see unconscious as a place of repressed memories of individual's uh, own memory and the ancestor's memories that he inherited as a species. For Freud, libido is a sexual energy, but for, for Jung, libido is a general psychic energy. Freud uh, perceives past experiences, uh, particularly childhood experiences, as very important. Uh, Jung also uh, perceives past experiences uh, as important, but Jung is also considers the future aspiration uh, as important to, to predict personality. And the Freud actually questioned Jung's interest in spirituality and religion, the way Jung describes this in, in, his, in his archetypes. Uh, but Jung, on the other side, disagreed with Freud's overemphasis on sexuality. So these were the few differences between Freud and Jung uh, that you will find um, in your book while reading the, uh, about New Freudian school of thought. Now let's see how Jung explains human psyche. According to Jung, Human psyche in its three in its, it has three components. Ego, the first component that actually represents the conscious. Uh, but then for the unconscious, Jung divide it into two parts. First one is personal unconscious. That is the part of the content of the unconscious that is related to your experiences as, as individual experiences. It means that this part of unconscious has a record of your own experiences such as childhood experiences. It also contains the memories including the suppressed memories. The second part is collective unconscious. It is a biologically based portion of unconscious which reflects universal themes and, and ideas, but it does not uh, reflect uh, the individual experiences. Collective unconscious is our psychological inheritance. It contains our knowledge and experience as transferred from our ancestors. The archetype that, that we will study in the next slide resides as layers uh, in this collective unconscious. Now, uh, let's see what's archetype. This, this was the most interesting part of uh, the Jung's theory uh, and it is also a distinctive, distinctive part. The archetypes represent universal patterns and images of human psyche. This is a pattern or, or you can say a framework within the collective unconscious 
and it serves to organize our experience providing the basis of many fantasies myths and symbols there are in fact as many archetypes as there are common experience of humankind throughout the human history these experience uh, based on the, these experience this archetype has the concepts which are unlearned and they organize the function of human experience every human is gifted with this psychic archetype layer since birth it means we cannot acquire this layer by education or other conscious efforts but but, it, but this is innate archetypes are the patterns or the framework within collective unconscious as as i told you earlier and uh, these archetypes actually constitute the structure of the collective unconscious they are psychic innate dispositions to experience and represent basic human behavior in different situations for example mother child relationship is governed by the mother archetype father child relationship is governed by the father archetype similarly birth death power all are controlled by archetypes the religious and mystic experiences are also governed by archetypes and jung says that the religious experience is linked with the experience of the archetype of the collective unconscious thus god himself is lived like a psychic experience and uh, of that path that leads us to to the realization of one psychic wholeness uh, by now you have understood that how jung uh, opposed the theory of tabula rasa blank template uh, through his archetypes i am 100% sure that you know about tabula rasa very well this concept of archetype is different from the biological perspective because biological perspective discuss the transfer of physical traits but jung's concept of archetype is a perspective that talks about the transfer of psychological traits i hope you understand archetype now now uh, let's see after um, understanding what is archetype let's see its major type as jung identified you can identify four major types of archetype let's learn about these types one by one first it is the persona persona in latin its its literal meaning is mask persona is the conscious character or role we assume in presenting ourselves to the world persona as i told earlier meaning a mask that we wear to play a role in the society our social mask sports the ego by shielding it from negative images uh, from the unacceptable images and we present ourselves as acceptable second is the shadow shadow is an archetype of darkness and repression it contains all the animal instincts repressed ideas sex desires and weakness it forms when we attempt to maintain our persona and it includes negative emotions like jealousy hatred greed and aggression third is sizigi sizigi is a combination of anima and animus anima is a feminine image in the male psyche and the animus is the male image in the female psyche and both represent our true image our true self the uh, the real self that uh, not the one we we mask to play our role in the society but the real self in simple words with our experience of brother sister husband wife father mother we have a unified or complete form of uh, this sizigi it is about having opposite gender aspects in ourselves 
According to Jung, the male and female masks that we wear are the roles that we are playing according to our social context. So this does not reflect our real image that uh, according to Jung is syzygy that actually combine male and female into a whole. Then we have the self. Self is a whole of a person, the unification of conscious and unconscious. And self is created through individuation. Individuation is a process of transformation to bring unconscious into conscious. Here I mean both type of unconscious, personal and collective. To bring unconscious into conscious and then assimilate into a whole personality. That is a combination of these two. Well, uh, in this course, this information about Jung is enough. You will read in more details in other specific courses such as personality development or personality theories. Uh, I will also recommend to read the relevant section in the book. And now we will move to Karen Horney. Karen Horney, uh, along with Anna Freud, uh, started his career and she was one of the first female analysts as well. And he, she, was, she was also the first person who publicly challenged on the issues of penis envy. Uh, from the beginning, she was very critical on Freud's male-centered ideas. And uh, she saw Freud's notion that women feel inferior as, as both biased and wrong. Instead, she argued that women are physiologically superior because of their reproductive capacity and that men seek to sub subordinate them uh, due to the fear because they, they cannot compete with her in, in reproduction. Uh, so the Karen Horney comes with a concept called womb envy and she challenged the concept of penis envy. She said that the reproductive power that a woman has make the men jealous because they cannot be pregnant, they cannot give birth, they cannot uh, breastfeed. And this deficiency caused them become, become envious uh, on women. This was uh, named by her as a womb envy that she proposed as innate psychological trait in men based on their biological limitations to give birth. Karen somehow, uh, despite of this major difference, she agreed with Freud on early childhood experiences shaping personality. And she gave the idea of basic anxiety that an intense sense of isolation and helplessness, uh, which is a primary source of human motivation. Karen presented three patterns of human interactions. The sociability, that is a tendency to move toward other people. Isolation, a tendency to move away from other people. Um, and then aggression and mistrust, that is a tendency to move against other people. So these three are the patterns of interaction that Karen um, suggested. She thinks that people tend to follow these patterns, but depending on their interactions that they have experienced in their childhood. Eric Erickson. Uh, now we will talk about Eric Erickson. Eric Erickson presented psychosocial stages of development and from the title, you can see he is pretty different from Freud's psychosexual stages of development. Well, according to the requirement of the course, I will not go in details uh, as you are supposed to learn in, uh, its details in other courses, even though I will provide useful information about the theory that will help you to understand it. Freud's uh, psychosexual, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Erickson's psychosocial uh, development uh, theory, uh, it builds on eight preceding stages providing an explanation about the conflict people experience at each stage. This conflict ultimately results 
in ego quality or ego pathology uh, positive or negative outcomes and each stage was named in a way that you can understand the conflict and its result in later personality uh, see for example infancy is about trust versus mistrust either you develop trust or you develop mistrust early childhood is either experience of shame or doubt preschool child will learn taking initiative or will have guilt feelings adolescence is about identity formation or role conflict and then young adulthood the age of warm emotions it is named as intimacy or isolation middle adulthood uh, you can say the age of responsible feelings when one likes to feel responsible is a conflict of genitivity versus technician how much the person is able to fulfill the responsibilities he or she owns and then maturity the last part is about ego integrity a whole life satisfaction or des despair as told earlier the major difference between freud and erickson is their approach to define stages of human development even though the timing for early five stages of erickson's theory are identity identical to the freud's defined stages we see erickson emphasizing on psychosocial development contrary to freud's view of psychosexual stages so take your time to read the slide um, uh, actually uh, that was a screenshot from your book uh, and you will understand what i mean when i say that uh, the difference of uh, the age group is is not uh, too much different but there is a difference of the approach and you can see in this slide and you have also studied the freud's psychosexual stages so now it is easy for you to compare Uh, whatever i was told about erickson today okay well now in this slide uh, you can uh, see the positive and negative outcomes of the positive and negative experience at each stage of life as i ever told you earlier that erickson talks about these stages in a conflict um, so you will see uh, in this slide that there are positive and negative outcomes of this conflict so this slide will help you to understand the effect of psychosocial experience at each stage uh, that erickson mentioned um how does it affect on our personality in a positive or negative way uh, for example you can see that uh, if a child develops mistrust in infancy uh, there would be uh, the, the symptoms of withdrawal uh, in him and similarly if you see the the young adult the person who has uh, successfully um, go through this stage with the intimate Uh, feelings and intimate relationships and intimate satisfactions uh, his his ego quality leads goes towards love um, and and you can understand the other as well from these slides so take your time to read it a bit or maybe you can later just pause the slide and you can read it i will also try to uh, upload these slides on um, microsoft team and lms so you can download it from there as well um Thank you very much. We have uh, almost uh, finished with psychodynamic perspective. Now we are uh, we will in next lecture we will move to humanistic perspective and very soon we are going to uh, draw comparisons on these different uh, perspectives in psychology. Uh I think again I I don't need to say but remember that your book is very important the textbook and you must see the textbook the boxes in the textbook um, the definitions in the textbook the summaries the scenarios 
you can see that uh, this will give you a lot of learning thank you very much